Hey everyone, this is Guppy Girl, and for this video, I will be showing my process of how I take aquarium plants and convert them to terrarium plants just for future projects. This was something that I had on the back burner and didn't really think I needed to make a video just quite yet, but as some of you may know, I am moving across the country and I'm taking all my plants, fish, and all of my little projects that I can maybe ship with me. So this is one of them I'm taking with me and I will show you what it looks like now and the growth and how I did it. Disclaimer, I am not an expert at growing plants, especially when it comes to terrarium plants and any terrestrial plants. For some background information, before January 16th of this year, I was previously growing the plants in this gray short bin. And as you can see, it was just um, the plants on top of some terrarium substrate I mixed up. And then there was a rock layer underneath that was holding in water. And on top was just some saran wrap, which wasn't ideal because I was losing a lot of moisture over time. And you'll see in um, the next clip that there are some areas where it's like really yellow and dried out. And I should have probably sprayed it more, but it was like something I forgot to spray most of the time. So there are a lot of dry, dead areas that are slowly coming back to life. Here, I'm pointing to some Monte Carlo, and then over here, I'm pointing to some Perla weed. And these are um, been growing terrestrial for, I would say about four or five months, so it did take a while for them to convert. The Monte Carlo did convert a lot faster though. Over here is some Subwasser Tang, which I thought it would be interesting to see if I can convert it to more of a terrarium plant, because right now it's, I would say it's fully aquatic as far as I know. But uh, I just did an experiment to see what would happen to it, so it's been kind of hanging in there. It does need a lot more moisture um, and a lot more sprays than the regular Moss and Monte Carlo. And then over here is just a small piece of pearl weed that is growing over there. So from the middle, or I should say, from the whole left side of the bin, it's a mixture of different mosses um, that I had, and I don't recall the names, but uh, they were basically mosses I bought in uh, tissue cultures, and they never fully converted to aquatic, and they're kind of stringy and messy looking, so I'll try to post a picture of that on the screen now. I still have them in the, one of my aquariums, but they just didn't convert very well. They're always uh, reaching up and getting kind of tangly looking, so eventually I'll probably remove all of that from my aquariums. But that's a mixture of those mosses. And, um, and then on the right hand side is Christmas moss. And you can see that does kind of look more like Christmas moss than all the other mosses. You can't even tell. It just looks like a big jumbled mess of green and dying stuff. Another really interesting observation I made is that the moss grows really good on wood. So even though I had it on a substrate of, I think it was like a mixture of sphagnum moss, uh, orchid bark, which is this wood, and um, I think it was like cocoa fiber or something like that. And it honestly held onto the wood very well. You can see it's already had some spores because there's some new growth at the very tip of the wood. So that was kind of what spurred me to uh, redo my whole setup of growing these mosses. For my new setup, I'm using this clear bin that's slightly taller and comes with a clear plastic lid. So this is a real big game changer for me, especially because I was running into problems where the moss was growing too high and touching the saran wrap. And then also the saran wrap was lifting up around the corners in some areas, so I was losing moisture, evidently leading to dried up moss, which wasn't good. So this new setup is going to help solve that problem. And I used blue aquarium gravel um, just because it's what I had lying around. Of course, use whatever gravel you prefer. I think this stuff looks really pretty in this kind of setup that I made. 
I wouldn't say I would use it in my fish tanks, but if it's free gravel someone's giving away locally, I'll snag it up because you can use it in any project, not just in your aquariums. As a separation um, between the drainage layer and the substrate, I'm using this plastic mesh uh, sheet and it's used for cross stitch. If you're a crafts person, you know what that is. Um, and yeah, you can buy these at any craft store for pretty cheap. And this is just to separate the drainage layer from the substrate layer where my plants will be at. Next, I cut a small hole and put in a net cup. Now these net cups you can get really easily if you buy plants constantly, or I'm sure if you asked an employee at a fish store, they might give you one for free that they have lying around. And you just need one for this. Now the purpose of this is so you can easily siphon out water if necessary. And if you're dealing with terrariums and stuff, sometimes things can go wrong and your water will get really smelly and foul up the whole system and will need to be changed out. So this is an easy way where you can put a siphon, like get direct access to the bottom of the, the bin and siphon out the water and then replace it with new water. For the main layer of substrate, I'm using just pure orchid bark. Now this was spurred on by seeing how easy and successful the moss was growing on that piece of bark. And it wasn't just like that one piece. I found like multiple pieces of moss in the other bin that were already sticking onto wood very well. So that made me think, why not just use orchid bark as the main substrate layer? So. I just filled the whole thing up with about an inch or two, or inch and a half I'd say, of orchid bark, sprayed it down really well, and then I placed the a layer of moss on top from the old bin. And then I put a small little layer very scattered around of orchid bark on top of the moss in hopes that eventually as the moss grows it will wrap around the bark and then start growing on top of the little pieces I put on top of the moss, if that makes any sense. Um, you'll see a uh, picture or video of that in the future. Unfortunately, I didn't record the me setting up the larger bin because I was big dum-dum and I pressed play when I didn't want to record and pressed pause when I did want to record. So as you can see, I ended up with a lot of garbage footage. So that's all cut out. Um, I'll show you uh, the end result of what this bin looks like now. For the clear bin, I used a mixture of mosses. I'm not sure what type of moss it is, but it's just like a mixture of all different types. And then for smaller setups that I wanted like to have select different uh, species of plants, I'm using these small little uh, cups, I would say. they. I bought them off of Amazon. They're like, uh, like little slushy cups and they have a cute little dome top that goes with them. And they're pretty short, so they're like a, I'd say maybe eight ounce or nine ounce cup. So for the cups, I did something very similar with what I did with the bin. It was just like miniature version where I filled the bottom layer up with gravel. And then I cut more of the mesh to go on top. And then here I'm adding the substrate from my old bin that I'm not using anymore since I'm using just pure orchid bark on the new bin. But um, this is mostly just sphagnum moss, some orchid bark, and cocoa fiber. For these cups in particular, I am using um, mostly Christmas moss, I believe. It was all from the right-hand side of the, the old bin, so it should mostly be Christmas moss. So like with the, the original idea, is I wanted to grow on wood, so I put a layer of orchid bark in all of the little cups and then I put the moss on top of it. Now the orchid bark was really dry so make sure to spray it really well if you're going to do something like this. Maybe pre-soak it would probably be a better idea. But yeah, just get it really wet and then I put all of the little pieces of moss on top and then a small layer of bark on top of the moss to weigh it down and also in hopes that the moss will grow up and then over the bark. Now, um, for these, for my like idea of doing this, I don't want like a full sheet of moss. I actually want little pieces of uh, bark with moss on for future projects. So I don't want a full sheet. Um, maybe if you do a full sheet, you would 
try a different method but for me I saw that the moss grew well on the little pieces of wood and I can definitely use little pieces of wood with moss on in the future and kind of make a layer or mat if I wanted to out of that. Lastly, I just need to pour in a little bit of water just so if there, when there's evaporation happening because it'll be humid in the pot, the evaporation will just hit the top of the um, container and then drip back down, but you need to have some water in the start of cycle. So I poured a little bit of water into each cup and I topped them all off with their little cute tops. <laughs> So this is what the bin looks like as of uh, today and most of it is still covered with bark. When I initially opened it this time around it felt um, wet but there was still some areas that where I could feel it was drier where was, the whole bin isn't 100% you know, airtight so I was losing some moisture that way I could feel like some of the areas were more drier than others. but. Considering it's been a month and a half and I haven't sprayed it until now, uh, that was um, pretty good for this type of bin. So I just sprayed it down really well to rejuvenate the moss in hopes that, yeah, it'll all come back to life. I mean, it's, it's a lot better than it used to look, which is mostly yellow, that's for sure. The first thing I did when opening the bin was I gave it a good smell. Now, this isn't exactly a science, but... Using your sense of smell is a really great way to tell if something is going right or wrong. And this is for your aquariums or terrariums too. So if your aquarium smells like ammonia, that's not a good sign. That means you have a lot of ammonia. And similar with the terrarium, if it smells like rotten stuff, that's not a good smell. Um, but the smell I got from this was it was like smelled like wet forest floor. Uh, Hard to say exactly, a little bit like of a pine smell. Moving on to the little cups, I did realize a few days after putting the cups together that uh, the I was losing too much moisture from the slit on top of the lid since these are cups intended for drinks and you're supposed to put a straw through the top. So I just had some little stickers lying around that I used to try to cover up the top as best as possible. I wish I recorded or took pictures of what I planted when I planted it in January but of course I didn't do that I don't know what I was thinking to be quite honest but um I unfortunately I don't have before and after results you'll just see the after at the moment for the first little container it didn't look like it grew too much uh this wasn't Christmas moss or the mixed mosses this was like um some really small stringy moss that I wanted to save I thought it was interesting and I had hadn't seen it before it just kind of popped up when I was going through the moss bin so I had it separated and it's it's growing a little bit I did put a little bit of a uh, dwarf baby tears in here which seems to have disappeared so it probably completely died out for the next six pictures these are six little pots of Christmas moss and they are a lot greener than I originally noticed and they I did see new growth on them just not a whole bunch yet so this is my subwasser tang cup it is half of the old subwasser tang from the gray bin and then I added new subwasser tang from one of my tanks that was in a fully aquatic um, environment the old growth that was already growing immersed for a while is still a light green. I don't know if this is supposed to be light green, but the side, the ones from the tank are dark green. So uh, maybe it's getting too much light. It's still hanging in there. It does seem to be still alive, um, but it's definitely uh, taking a very long time to grow. Another one of the interesting cups, I would say, is my cup of pearlweed. So I had just a very little amount from earlier that I replanted into here. I added some 88 aqua soil to this only because I didn't have any other soil to grow them in at the, this point in time when I made the cups. And the whole reason for this and not just growing them in my sphagnum moss orchid bark substrate is that um, pearl weed is a root feeder so it needs some type of nutrients at the roots for it to pick up and uh, grow. 
after replanting it this time around in the little cups, I have definitely seen an improvement with this plant. The old growth um, would be the leaves like at the lower to the substrate. Those are really small and pin shaped, just really small and thin. While the newer growth that is towards the top of each stem has a more of a aquatic looking shape to it. So it looks very similar to what it looks like when it's in an aquarium. It's just a very miniature plant. So that was something I noticed that was very interesting to me because usually when you take an aquatic plant and you grow it um, in a terrestrial environment, the plant will look different and be a lot larger, like larger leaves, um, just a larger plant in general. Then you put it in your aquarium and it will die back and it will have smaller leaves. So this was kind of the reverse, which I found very fascinating. And I, I definitely need to do more research on this plant and observe it more as it's growing in these little cups. For the Monte Carlo, it has really showed improvement in these little cups. Prior to this, when it was growing in the gray container, it was very low to the ground and just bushy and had small leaves. After putting it in this new container, and it's been about a month and a half of growth, the leaves are now larger and the plant is more bushier than it was before and already sending out runners, which is really great. So out of all the plants, it's so far the best that has converted and the best adapted for terrestrial growth. And I definitely think in the future, this would be a really good ground cover, just a carpet, a terrarium. As a side comparison, you can see that the leaves on the terrestrial Monte Carlo are a lot larger than the aquatic version. Uh, these are little clippings of Monte Carlo that I cut and I wanted to save, so I replanted them in these tiny little salsa cups, fully submerged in water with ADA aqua soil. And they're growing, you know, slowly and steadily. As I was mentioning earlier, the aquatic version is a lot smaller than the terrestrial version of the plant, which is very common. I've been growing this Monte Carlo in little cups for about six months now, and they were really full of algae and biofilm. So prior to recording all the footage for this video, I threw them in my mixed shrimp tank and the shrimp just cleaned them up. You can't even tell that they were covered in algae. And then, of course, my beta had a fun little time interrupting their hard work and sitting in the cup. A new addition to my little experiment is this java moss, which has been growing in a, the cup for about a month and a half. And it's already beginning to stick onto the bottom of some of the bark, so I'm really excited and have high hopes that this will do really well in a terrestrial version. As a side note, since I'm moving soon, I'm thinking about how I'm going to ship or package all my little projects. And the really great thing about these little cups is they, that they fit perfectly in those takeout um, cardboard containers that you get. So I've been collecting a ton of these from McDonald's um, just because I thought these look like they could be useful for something. And, and it hit me yesterday that they'd be perfect for packaging these little cups. So... There's my plan on how to ship these. At least, that solves one of my problems. Maybe this will be helpful for you to know too.